1863, at the midst of the Civil War, Juan Pablo Pacheco was one of nine heads of families to be given land in New Mexico under one of the various government homestead acts. He, along with his wife and children, moved to the small town and set down roots. Puerto de Luna, roughly translated to Gateway to the Moon. While the exact reason for the name of the town differs from author to author, one of the more famed stories behind the naming of the town comes from a tale set as early as the Coronado expedition. It is said that while exploring, he stopped in the valley to rest. He named the area such because he noticed the brightness of the moon being framed between two mountains. It even goes that he stayed for a while and built a bridge that crosses the river Pecos. This bridge is a large symbol for the town and doesn't go unmentioned in any works regarding it. It is also one of the main archetypes in a book written by Rodolfo Anaya, entitled Bless Me Ultima. Recently made into a motion picture and taking place in Puerto, it is a coming-of-age story of a boy named Antonio Mares, his mother by the maiden named Luna. Oddly enough, the name Luna and Anaya were also the names of two families that were part of the homestead settlement in the 1860s. In the story, the major event that causes little Antonio to lose his innocence is the witness of a murder on the town bridge. Similarly, the grandson of Juan Pablo Pacheco, also named Pablo, was killed under the same bridge when he was stabbed by the jealous boyfriend of a girl he had danced with at a small town party. While a doctor was called in from nearby Santa Rosa, he did not make it through the night and is buried in the family cemetery in Puerto. While saddened by the loss of his son, Desiderio Pacheco and his wife Rosa, maiden name being Coronado, had nine other children, including Andres Pacheco, who would become my great-grandfather. Andres Pacheco was born November 21, 1889. When World War I hit, he joined the U.S. Army and was in the 7th Cavalry, stationed on Fort Bliss in El Paso, Texas. He was not the first to have served in the military. Adolfo Pacheco, his brother, also served in the U.S. Army in World War I, fighting German forces in the trenches for nearly 10 months. Before him, his great-uncle Antonio Pacheco fought in the Battle of Glorieta in 1864. It is known as the Gettysburg of the West and proved to be a strategic victory for Union forces as they repelled a Confederate invasion from West Texas and New Mexico. If they had lost, the Confederate victory could have affected the final outcome of the Civil War. They have taught me how to grieve when I've been broken, broken after While in Texas, Andres met a woman by the name of Raquel Marquez, who was from nearby Socorro, Texas. They were married in 1923. My grandmother, Rosa Pacheco, was born in 1924 in El Paso, Texas. The family then moved to Optima, Oklahoma, when Andres got a job with the Rock Island Railroad Company to help maintain the railroads. My grandmother lived there with her two sisters and brother. When my grandmother was six years old, the ecology of the Midwest changed drastically as overplowing and soil erosion would cause massive waves of dust to roll through the skies, leaving everything in its past in total darkness, sometimes for days. Waters from the sky fills our cups and keeps them overflowing. She describes what she remembers. Birds flying overhead in an attempt to beat the dust storms, as breezes turned into stronger gusts and gusts turned to tornado-like winds 
that seemed to push you as you tried to find a place to shelter. She notes that they were fortunate enough to be spared from the famine that swept the land. Those who owned larger livestock and had no place to shelter them usually went hungry, as their food and income source would die from dust inhalation and ultimately suffocation. Because her family kept chickens, they were much easier to shelter right before a storm was about to hit. They were also able to make a keep economically because her father, being a railway worker, found work was easier to come by as opposed to being a farmer. While many families were forced to pack up and leave, my grandmother and her family were able to make it through the storm and continued to live in Optima for 17 more years. My grandmother graduated from Gaiman High School in 1943. Her daddy Andres passed away that November. He was transported back to Puerto and a funeral mass was given at Our Lady in Refuge and he too was buried in the family cemetery. She then moved back to her mother's hometown of Socorro, Texas. She got a job working as an office clerk at a Franklin's department store in downtown El Paso. She then met a man by the name of Salvador H. Sanchez, who was a truck driver and later became a heavy equipment operator working in construction. They were married on October 6, 1946 and had six children. My mother, Rosemary, was her fifth child, born on August 29, 1957. When she graduated from Socorro High School, she began working with the U.S. government as an office clerk at Fort Bliss and later became a management analyst. Her eldest sister, Julie, was also working at Fort Bliss, and it was her who, in 1977, introduced Rosemary to a young GI by the name of Martin Muddy, who had just returned from his two-year stay in Germany. Apparently, they hit it off, because they got married on October 6, 1984. Ten years later, I am born. 